Hi kids, so for your proficiency practice today, uh, I've just posted the practice problems from lesson six, and I'm just gonna go over the first couple with you, and then I would like for you to work the rest of them on your own, okay? Uh, so first we're gonna take a look at number one, and it says a car is traveling down a highway at a constant speed described by the equation D equals 65T, where D represents the distance in miles uh, that the car travels at this speed in t number of hours okay so this is kind of we'll think about the the speed triangle speed equals distance over time okay and we'll use that to kind of keep that in mind when we're answering the parts of this question so it says uh, a says what does 65 tell us in this situation well we know that uh, this equation 65 times t, we know that 65 tells us the speed of the vehicle, okay? Because if we plug it in, distance equals speed times time, the part that we are missing, uh, or the variable that we're missing, the one that we don't see in that equation, is speed. So we know that 65 is the speed, okay, by using that equation. Okay, so next it says, how many miles does the car travel in one and a half hours? Okay, well, we're gonna have to put this into a table. Okay, we know that the constant or the speed is 65. And we know that D will go in the Y column. So the distance is here. And then time goes in the X column. So it says, how many miles does the car travel in one and a half hours? So in 1.5, and then we're going to solve for Y. Okay, so Y is equal to speed times time. Okay, and then if we, I'm going to clear this out here so we can kind of see. We know that speed is 65, and our time is 1.5 hours. And if we multiply that out, um, we will find that that comes out to be 97.5. Okay, so in one and a half hours, the car will have traveled 97.5 miles okay or mi oops well messed that up how about let's try again mi there we go all right so how long does it take the car to travel 26 miles at this speed so we'll go ahead and put 97.5 yeah that goes over there all right, so if our distance is now 26, we need to find what goes here. So this is X. So we would solve for X. And X is this, um, is going to be, or time is going to be uh, distance divided by speed. Okay. And so our distance is, let me clear this out. Our distance is 26 miles. And our speed um, is 65. So we could reduce this. Uh, we could actually reduce this down. Um, far enough we could get this, it, it'll reduce down to two fifths. Okay, and two fifths, kind of move this over here. We put that as our answer. This will be two fifths, which is equivalent to 0.4, or uh, it's two fifths of an hour, or 0.4. Uh, four tenths of an hour or is the same as 24 minutes okay. 
Okay, so we can put 24 minutes here in this place. Oops, I erased half my box. So 24 minutes. Okay, it's not a whole hour. All right, so I'm going to clear this out. And we're going to look at number two. And this one's asking us to represent that proportional relationship using an equation. Oops. Oh, try to move my page down. There it is. Went too far. All right. So it says Elena, uh, Elena has some bottles of water that each hold 17 fluid ounces. Um, the first part of this question wants us to write an equation that relates the number of bottles to the total uh, volume of water. Okay. Well, if we think back, we're going to have to go back to our scientific method and talk about that dry mix. Uh, we can do a whole lesson on how you would know where to put your variable. Uh, but for this case, um, I'll tell you that the things that can be changed, uh, that can be the we can change the number of bottles that we have. And because when we change the number of bottles that we have, that will change the overall amount of water, so it will be our total. But the thing that will not change is how much water each of the bottles hold. So um, we will represent that. That's going to be our constant, is how much each bottle holds. And each bottle holds 17 ounces. Now we can't change how much each bottle holds, but we can change how many bottles we have. And then that in turn changes the total amount of water that we have. Okay, if you remember back, we did, uh, when we did our experiment there, we talked about dry mix. Uh, that's how uh, we know that. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Okay, but for this, it says we want to write an equation that represents the relationship or relates these two together. So our H2 target for this week um, asks us to, whoops. All right, sorry, my screen changed. Bear with me. All right, there it is. Is um, to write this as Y equals KX. Okay. And that's our formula for representing a proportional relationship. So in this case, we would write it, uh, we would look at where our, what our y is, our variable for y. In this case, it's w. And w is equal to our constant, which is 17, times how many bottles of water we have. So our relationship will be represented by W equals 17B. Okay. The next part says how much water is in 51 bottles? Well, for this one, this one's sort of simple. We know that we have 17 ounces in each bottle. And if we have 51 bottles, we just multiply that out. And if we multiply 17 times 51, we will find that that is equal to 867 um, fluid ounces. So we could put our measurement there. That will be 867 fluid ounces of water is in 51 bottles. Now the last one says, how many bottles does it take to hold 51 ounces? Okay. Well, this one's going to be quite the opposite. Uh, if we were putting this information in the table, then um, we would just put it in and see how many bottles, how many bottles, so we would uh, be trying to find X, would hold 51 ounces. And we would put that over there. So in this case, we would be trying to solve for X. And so X is equal to y divided by k and that would be 51 divided by 17 because our value for y is 51 
and we know k is 17. So if we divide that out, we will find that 51 divided by 17 is 3. So we would need 3 bottles to hold 51 ounces of water. Okay, so hopefully those two will kind of help you in answering the other questions on this page. Um, and if you have any questions with any of these, feel free to send me an email. Uh, you can rewatch the examples here. Go and rewatch the videos on the Khan Academy. And um, we'll spend the rest of the day finishing up any assignments that we don't have finished for this week. Any of the Khan Academies that you still need to work on. And if you get hung up on anything, feel free to send me a message in Class Dojo or in email. All right. Have a great weekend.